Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in again. I apologize in advance if I look tired throughout this video because I am exhausted. I spent the last, I don't know, month-ish, two months, whatever, I can't even keep count anymore, putting my car back together to make it to Eibach me, and then the final first-class fitment held in Princeton, New Jersey, which was an amazing show. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of either of those shows. I was just way too tired to walk around with my GoPro and record. But I must say, and I am sure that there are going to be a lot of videos out on YouTube covering those two shows. So if you want, just take a look for them out there, and I'm sure they are. But today I have my car. It is together for a change. Finally got the wing in part two video coming for that soon but first today I need to do some work on my engine I need to change some valve stem seals and I want to upgrade my lost motion assembly so valve stem seals from super tech and I've also got uh, some lost motion assemblies that I want to change but yeah this is what today's video will consist of let me get started because there is a lot to get involved with today this might be a long one so one of the first things you're going to want to do is remove your valve cover. So I'm sure most of you guys have done this plenty of times already. It's just a series of number 10 uh, nuts that we're going to remove. You pull up your spark plug wires, you pull them out, and you remove the valve cover. What I like to make sure I have, though, is a designated area for me to put the valve cover once I remove it. So I like to put down some uh, the blue little shop rags that look like paper towels. I put them down so when I put the valve cover there, no oil goes onto whatever I put the valve cover onto and no dirt, dust, filings or anything else gets stuck to the valve cover gasket. <laughs> next thing I'm gonna do is remove these cam caps these are all 12 millimeter bolts again I want to keep all this hardware together with each row of cam caps so I removed these retainers on top of the cam caps those were all 12 millimeter there were two 10 millimeters here and these as well over here because these caps are going to come up with the cam so I'm leaving the distributor in for now all I did was remove the 112 millimeter bolt holding in the top should be able to remove that cap easily with the remainder so I took these off and I walked them over to my bench and I set them up accordingly so I can have so I can remember which one was the intake side, which one was the exhaust side. So I leave them set up the same way as my engine is. So got a little plastic pry tool that I'm going to use to try and make this a little easier. You don't want to gouge any of this aluminum here. got the rest of the caps off and I actually had to remove my cam gear bolts because if I didn't I wouldn't be able to slide the cam through here to get it out because the cam would hit this part of my car body and I don't want that so I removed the bolts it was a pain in the butt to get them out after after taking the timing belt off already but so I got them out so now what I can do is just wiggle the gear off. Be mindful of this key right here and the direction that it goes. So if you look closely, the cam itself has a guide in it that this little key goes in and then the gear has a hole in it or a guide 
that lines up with that. So I'm gonna put all this stuff aside, grab the gears, well, grab the cams, put them out. See, I like to keep my stuff organized so I know where everything is when it's time to reinstall. I had to remove the distributor and the VTEC solenoid so I can gain access to this hole here and this Allen key plug. So I need to remove that Allen key plug and have access to that because there's a shaft that these rocker arms are attached to, that they're held on to. So I need to remove that shaft to be able to remove the rocker arm sets so I can gain access to these here, which are the lost motion assemblies, which I want to change. Uh, when I get them out, I'll show you why I want to change them and what I'm changing them to. So I just, when I remove this, some oil comes out, so I just put some, uh, some blue shop towels there just to try and keep things neat. But I will be getting the Allen key for here, which actually, no, let me find out which one that is now. I believe it might be a 10. Let's see what we've got. Find out what size is this? A 10. 10, 10, 10. I hope this works. I don't want to go back over there. 10 it is. See? So the 10 fits in there. We'll break that loose. And then uh, there's two in the front as well. Same Allen keys. They're behind this plastic here. So I may have to remove this as well. I hope not because. I really don't want to go through that. But if I have to, I'll do it. Uh, I might have to remove those two to help push those uh, pins out. One of the first things I'm going to do before I remove this bolt or the cap is I'm going to zip tie these rocker arms. I'm going to zip tie them together so when I do remove them, for the most part, they don't fall apart. And I can keep them together as a set. Now I already took the plastic cover off that goes here, it was just held on by one more number 10. And now I have access to the two Allen key caps that are here. So now that I've got all of the rockers zip tied together, I went over to my toolbox and grabbed myself an M5 bolt, which is your typical 8 millimeter head. Now these two here are holding the shaft that holds the rockers in place. So I'm just going to thread this into here, if I can see, thread that right in, pull that up, and there she is. That is the locking pin that keeps the rocker shaft in place. Now to pull out the other one, thread it right in. See, just to get a little closer view, it threads right into that part of the block. Well, not the block, but the little guide pin. Threads right in. Give it a nice little pull, and out she comes. So now, I can just take my finger in here, inside this hole out of those two plugs that we removed, and push the shaft out. And it comes right out of the other side. See, there she is. We'll do the same thing for the exhaust side. There it is, right there. Now I'll probably get a screwdriver, just push it a little bit more, and then I can take both of those out, and as I pull them out, I'll be removing the rockers and setting them aside. I decided to grab a quarter inch drive extension instead. No sharp edges on that thing. So, push this through. this and pull it the rest of the way out. Alright, so we'll always know that this is going to be the side to the front of the engine because it has that slot or the hole 
where that lock pin locks into it, right there. So I'm going to go put this on my bench. Alright. Again, the hole is there, and when you reinstall, just keep in mind that there is no hole on the opposite side of it. It doesn't go straight through. It's just like a slot where the pin slides into to keep this from moving in and out. Now I'm gonna remove my sets of rockers. See, I zip tie them so I can pull them out nice and easy. I'm gonna do two at a time so I don't lose orientation on which one goes where. I like to put these things back exactly where they came from. This here is the head minus the cams, the cap, all the other goodies. These here, if I can get out of the light, are the lost motion assemblies. These little suckers are what will cause a lot of excess noise and chatter and rattling inside the cylinder head. So, oh, another phone call. Why do people like to call me so much? I just want to finish working on my car. All right, where was I? Uh, Lost motion assembly, so yes, they can cause a lot of chatter, a lot of extra unwanted noise in the cylinder head, so I personally like to change them because of that. Got my handy dandy needle nose, just gonna grab one of them here, and it pulls right out. So this is your Honda B-Series lost motion assembly right here. I'll get it to the bench in a minute after I pull the rest of these out, and then I'll go over how these are designed versus the new ones that I'm installing. Okay, so this is the factory Honda LMA. So the OEM LMAs are basically a three-piece design that works with oil. So oil will go in through the bottom or the top of that pinhole there, and then inside there is a small spring. This spring along with the help from the oil work this lost motion assembly so when the VTEC rocker comes up pushes down when you're not in VTEC this helps keep that rocker from flopping all over the place looking and making a whole bunch of noise so I'm replacing this three piece which usually ends up making some nice little chattering noise with this thing again. Darn it, one handed stuff. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yeah. So I'm changing this three piece design for this spring. This is it. It is a progressive spring that sits in the same space that you can use without worry. I personally like these better than the OEM Honda ones. Some other people may beg to differ. They may like the OEM Honda ones better. But me personally, I like this. The less moving stuff there is, the less chances of failure. So here these go. These I've put in already. But for those of you wondering, you literally just take the spring and drop it right in. That is it. And there goes your new aftermarket lost motion assembly. Drops right in there. So now I need to get my little special tool so I can remove the spring retainers and that way I can get to the valve stem seal. I'm also going to go over the tool that I'm going to use to keep the valve from dropping once I remove the tension from the spring. Some of the tools that I'll be using today to make this job easier is not exactly just a compression tester because I'm not checking compression but I'm going to be using the hose from the compression tester. I'm going to remove the Schrader valve from the end of it. And I already made sure that this end connects to my air compressor. Well, the hose for my air compressor. So what I can do is set the regulator on my air compressor to 100 PSI or 110 PSI. Thread this in to the cylinder head where the spark plug goes and then hook this up to my airline. That way I can keep all four valves up as I compress the valve spring. So this was a helpful little tool. I've seen other guys use nylon string. They'll pack it in there and then they'll rotate the crank. So 
it's at top dead center or as close to it as it can get so the string will keep the valves up the second tool that's going to come in handy or that is actually necessary is a spring compressor so that's just some lube this spring compressor here uh, i'll leave a part number in the description of where you can get it this bolts onto the cylinder head where the cam caps went so this will bolt on like so this bolt will go in either one of these holes thread down pushing this cup so this cup has an opening where you can gain access to the valve keepers once the cup is pushed down using this bolt whoop, using that bolt so this will compress your spring and your retainer so you can gain access to the keepers once you remove the keepers via the magnetic screwdriver you back out the screw and then you can remove the spring and retainer the third tool that i also got from steven is oh no i made a mess better not lose anything steven i kicked my butt third tool is these pulling pliers for the valve stem seals uh, some people i've seen use spark plug wire pullers uh these might be that i don't see a name on it but he told me that these work for the valve stem seals uh i've done it before i've used this tool that he's lent me uh it can be tough sometimes but we made it work that day so let's see if i can do it again but yeah these three tools here are what's going to help make this job a lot easier guys so i've got my hose from my compression tester kit threaded into the cylinder head where the spark plug goes i've got my air hose from my air compressor hooked up to it I've got the 100 pounds, 110-ish pounds going into the combustion chamber. And yeah, my little GoPro mount is set up right there so you guys can get a better view. I do this with a cell phone and a GoPro, so forgive me. Yeah, so that's all set up there. I've got the valve keeper tool over here, my little hammer and a socket. I'll show you what I use that for in a minute. Got this socket for the tool and I've got my two magnetic screwdrivers the reason I have this hammer and socket is because sometimes with the valve keeper tool when you go to push the keeper down I mean the retainer down the keepers are stuck to the retainer and then the retainer and the valve go all the way down and now you've got air from your compressor escaping through your exhaust or your intake whichever side you have your tool on so I'll take this, I'll just put it over here and I'll give it a little tap with a hammer just to try and relieve some pressure or try to break them free. But I only do that after, I'm sorry, I only do that once the air is hooked up. That way I have something to help keep the valve up. All right, so like I just stated, I'm gonna take my extension in my socket, put it right over the valve retainer, give it a little tap just so I can try to break those keepers loose from the retainer. And then now I can set up the valve stem tool or the retainer tool so I can get the keepers out. So I drop that little cup in there. Remember to always leave the, outs the opening of the cup facing out so you can get access to the keepers. There is these two will thread right into where the old cam caps were I just hand tighten them and then the longer bolt with the rounded end goes into your tool line up that cup with this bolt and you'll see where the rounded edge makes contact and to be honest you really don't need a ratchet or anything I just put a socket on it and I turn it and then I can gain access to my keepers the keepers are there I'll take my magnetic screwdriver that's one and two I've got both my keepers on my screwdriver I'm gonna set these aside so I know what cylinder I'm sorry what valve they're from now I can back this out
All right, I'll take my tool just the way it is and I'll put it aside. And I'll take the cup as well and I will put it aside. Now I can remove my keeper and valve springs. I know I showed you guys the tool earlier. This tool, you know, but I haven't had much luck with this pulling the valve seals out. So I went a little Neanderthal and I grabbed a small needle nose vice grip. So this has been my savior today. Uh, this is not how I would have wanted to do it, but this is how I had it work. So now I take the vice grip, making sure that I'm away from the valve when I clamp it. So I don't know if you guys can see, but I've got space. Let me grab a flashlight. I've got space in there so the valve doesn't touch the tool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lean this vice grip over to the side. If you see now in the middle of the vice grip there is no longer the valve. And what I can do, or what I've done, is I've wiggled. This may get a bit shaky. I've wiggled and pulled. Let me put this down. Hopefully that's a good angle. I've wiggled and pulled, wiggled and pulled. It's like pulling out a tooth. And out it is. Now if you see, there's still some rubber from the seal down here. I do take a rag and I wipe around where the seal seat is, so I make sure I don't have any leftover rubber from the old seal. Two of the new Supertech valve seals, and I'll fix my gloves because I'm going to end up dropping these. I'll take a little dab of oil from somewhere in the cylinder head, I'm going to put some inside to help make it a little easier when the valve goes in, and then a little bit again on the valve itself just to help lubricate the seal once it goes in. So I push the seal in, I get it pressed up against the bottom. I'm gonna do this one again, lube it up a bit. Lube up the valve. And so you can get a better view. Just gonna take the seal push it onto the valve get it to the bottom and now I'm going to use that hammer and socket again what I've learned is an 11 millimeter works best to fit over the seal so sorry about all the shakiness I take the socket I lay it over the seal and you can literally watch it go down I hope the angle is good, but as you tap lightly, you can watch the seal fall into place. And that is it. That, my friends, is the valve stem seal replacement procedure brought to you by me. Um, I'm sure there's a tool to set this in better, but this is what worked for me. The seals are in. Now I can do the reverse of getting the springs out. So I just wanted to show you how the seals look in there once they're in. So now I'm going to put the springs back on the same orientation I took them out at. Left spring on the left spring, right spring on the right side. Reinstall the keeper tool. And the spring tool, however you like to call it. I like to call it the keeper tool. Put the cup back in there. I realized that that wasn't a really good angle. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it on this side. I'm going to do it again. Well, not again. I have to do it anyway. But I set up the tool properly so the cup can push down the valve spring and the retainer. So I can install the keepers. 
So if you look down in there, it might be a little too bright. You can see the top part of the valve sticking up and there's a little groove there. And the keepers have a little groove in them so that they can hold into there and be wedged into the valve retainer. Like I did before, I take one of the keepers, be sure to keep it with the taper side facing down. So you'll see that the keeper kind of has like a V shape to it. The V, the point of the V is going to go towards the bottom. So I'm going to squeeze this in here, try to line it up the best I can, hold it with the other screwdriver, and great success. That one went in nice and easy. Now I'm going to turn this one around a bit, just so I can try and line up the next one, have space for it. This can be a little tricky because sometimes they want to pull off of the valve, the top of the valve. So that one's left me space now. I'll line this one up now again with the V part of the keeper facing down. Slap that in there. Hold it with the screwdriver and ta-da. We've got the keepers in place. So now the keepers are there. I'm gonna back up on this tool and the keepers are gonna fall into, well not fall into, but be guided into the valve retainer. And that's it. That is how you change the valve stem seals. Now I gotta do the other side. But for the most part, it is all literally identical. The rest of them are the same so just got to take some time be patient because it does get a little frustrating sometimes getting the keepers back in but this is it so putting the last of the rocker sets laying them back in before I slide the shaft through zip tying them together well I had them zip tied mm -hmm. together already so that way I know the orientation and which so I'm going to grab the shafts and start sliding those in. I've got the intake shaft here, so I mentioned this before, but I'll get a better angle now. This hole does not go all the way through, so we're going to have to make sure that this stays up when we slide the shaft through so we can get that lock pin back inside. Just cleaning up any little extra oil that's here before I slide them in. Now comes the fun part of lining up all the rockers with it. So now the shaft is pretty much all the way in, just a little bit sticking out. So what I'm going to do is keep an eye on the hole from the top of the cylinder head to make sure I line up that guide perfectly. I'm gonna push the guide back in. Come on. Come to papa. There we go. That's it, and that was it. It's in. Now to do the next one, the exhaust side. The other shaft and I need to rotate it just a little bit to get that guide pin in so I'm gonna get something to help me out with that. I grabbed one of the magnet mag uh, magnetic screwdrivers that I had before. Just gonna give this a little rotation. Oh, wrong pin hole. Gotta go further than that. Now I can slide this in. Needs a little bit on this side. Oh no, I might have went too much. Oh, perfect. Both dial pins are in. So now I can cut these zip ties, put those caps back on, and then I can lay the cams in. Clean, let me grab those caps and the number 10 Allen key to thread those in. Got my hand. 
handy dandy torque wrench. They are supposed to be torqued to, I think it's 7.75 pounds or something like that. Give these a little tighten, a little more than what I did from the thing. All right, one. Two and three. Now to drop these cams in here. So before I put the cams in, just want to point out that I went and I bought new cam seals for the front end of the engine. Two Honda ones, brand new. Uh, reason I do this is because if I'm here, I'm removing the part. I don't want to have an issue with it after I put it back together. I rather just, you know have some peace of mind and know that I put a brand new piece in there so that's the part number I'm gonna go push these onto the cams and then drop the cams in so that cam is in place I'm going to go grab the exhaust cam now and do the same thing just a little note as well so these have a little keyway in them. I don't know if you can see here. We're gonna put the cams in with that keyway facing up. That should be your top dead center for your timing when it comes time to put all the cam gears back together. So I'm gonna put them as close to up as I can get. I'm gonna leave those there and now I'm gonna get my cam caps and start laying them in in the same order that I removed them from. Before I go install these, which I just forgot, I should have brought it with me, I need to get me some Honda Bond. Got my Honda Bond, just like I said, just gonna take a little dab, put a little dab on my finger, about that big. And I'm just gonna put it on each corner of where the cam seal, I'm sorry, where the cam cap meets the cylinder head. Just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a whole glob because these are two machine surfaces going back together with each other. We do this just as a precaution to make sure we don't get any oil seeping by. That way you know you have a good seal. start torquing these down. These bolts are all 20 pounds and the 10 millimeters are just over 7 pounds. So I'll probably end up doing 10 pounds on those as well. So let me start with this sequence. So all of these are torqued down now, 
I'm just gonna give them a one over just to double check and then I can throw the cam gears on the cam cover or the cam cover the back cover of it then the gears time it up front cover VTEC solenoid distributor and then we can crank it so I put the plastic cover back on now it's time for me to get the cam gear onto the camshaft so I've got my key so if you look the key has like a little point on one side the point and the curve going down is going to slide into that groove sorry my big thumbs in the way all right so there it is the key is in the keyway now I'm just gonna try and get this in there nice and flat so I can slide the cam gear on let's see if I can do this with one hand And I did it. Look at that. There it is. Cam gear is on. Now I can put the bolt on. And then I'll do the same for the other side. Cam gears are back in. And bolts are torqued. The torque for those bolts uh, is 41 pounds. That's what I found in the helmet manual. Uh, so what I did to torque them down was I took my 19 millimeter socket with a ratchet. And it's being pressed against my splitter. Um, if you don't have a splitter, then you can kind of just get like a, a breaker bar to attach the socket to, and you can make sure it wedges, wedges itself on the ground. Then I take the torque wrench, set it up there. There we go. I've got my 41 foot pounds on each cam gear. Uh, just in case you guys are wondering, I did time the engine before. I did all of this, but like I said, this isn't going to be a video on timing. It's more or less just the valve stem seals and the lost motion assembly. So now on to the valve cover. Okay, everybody. So the distributor is back on. The VTEC solenoid is back on. Before I put the valve cover back on, I am going to put some Honda bond in some specific spots. This was taught to me by a friend of mine. This might be in the Honda service manual, but... I put a little dab in each corner where the cam cap meets the uh, the valve cover. So a little dab here, a little dab here, 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 same thing on the front side, here and here, and also here and here. The reason I do that is because the valve cover doesn't always seal perfectly in those corners. So the Honda Bond is going to give it that extra seal protection so let me dab some honda bond on my fingers put that down and then we'll slide the valve cover in Don't forget to put this cover back on before the valve cover, just in case. I mean, that's if you want to. I personally like the OEM covers. So it's a pain in the ass to put it back on with the valve cover tightened. So now if the valve cover's still a little bit loose, I can slide this in. And now I can start tightening down the valve cover. Valve cover is tightened down, spark plug wires are back in. Now the question of the day is, which spark plug cover should I go with? The OEM Silver Honda one, or should I go with my uh, my Spoon Sports? I believe this is a Gen 2. Let's see, let's take a quick look. How's that look? Hmm, 
I don't know. What do I use a silver one? I mean, I kind of like the silver because it's that OEM Honda look. So you guys let me know in the comments what you guys like better. I think I'm going to stick with the silver one for now, but I'd like to hear what your guys' thoughts. So comment down below, let me know. So everything is back together. What I did is I pulled the connectors for the fuel injectors because what I want to do is I want to crank the car for a little bit, build a little oil pressure, make sure the oil goes back up into the cylinder head. Make sure I'm in neutral. Grab my key. Hopefully my battery didn't die. Doesn't seem like it. And I'm just going to crank a little bit. Get my big arm out of the way. Alright, so cranked a little bit. Everything turned over nicely. Going to plug the injectors back in. But yeah, we're we'll going to start it now. Let's see how this goes. I know why it's not starting. Guess what I forgot to plug in? My Dizzy. Wow, rookie mistake. So be sure to plug in your Dizzy so you don't end up like me trying to start your car with no spark. Let's see if we can do it again. All right, there she goes. Purring like a little kitten. guys so I'm gonna let the car warm up for a little bit and then we will go from there I'm sure everything's fine it's actually nice and quiet now I don't hear a lot of ticking from the engine sounds good all right everyone so there you have it that is the end of today's video i'm sure it's going to end up being a long one i'm going to go edit this now but i really hope it was helpful for you like uh when i first did this i saw like a three minute video that didn't go into too much detail but i, I hope i didn't didn't bore you with how long i made this one so let me know in the comments if there's anything i missed or you have any other questions and yeah keep tuned because i've got some more stuff coming up i'm actually going to pull the car out uh, one of these days and do like a nice walk around show you guys how it looks all together now So again, thank you so much for tuning into the YouTube channel. It really does mean a lot to me uh, I you know, I'm doing this because I like it I want to be able to share with you guys what I build and hopefully you guys learn something from it or it makes something easier for you guys in the future So again, thank you very much. Be well stay safe until next time. I'll see you guys later